Welcome to the Hampton Beach Village District Monthly Meeting. It's Wednesday, March 11, 2015. I'd like to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Uh, to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Are they right here? Yeah. Okay, we're gonna. We, I, I didn't have Richard on the agenda. I wasn't sure if he was gonna be here, but uh, we want to talk about the election. So, I think Richard would like to get up. Are you ready for us, or I can wait? Okay. All right. Well, we'll skip that. We'll go right to old business. Bob, do you have any old business? No, just to thank the voters for passing the uh, zoning articles, particularly the ones as relate to staying in the clean air flood insurance program. Maureen, any old business? No. Um, what do you consider the coloring book, old or new? That's old. Coloring book is done. And I see two people here who might. Would you like the coloring book? Here, come right up and get it. Oh. Yeah. Enjoy them. Yeah, the crayons. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I think that's all I have. That's it. That's it. All right. I have any old business. Richard, you ready? All right. I am Richard Ryan, the moderator for the annual meeting for the Hampton Beach Village District, which will be held on Friday, March 27th, <coughs> right here at the Barnard Fire Station. Voting for officers will take place from 1 to 7 p.m. <coughs> at 7 p.m., we will convene the meeting to vote on the following warrant articles. And we do have quite a list here. I'm not going to read them all, just very briefly. And right at the beginning, the official notification. You are hereby notified to meet at the Hampton Beach Fire Station located at 119 Brown Ave at 1 p.m. in the afternoon of Friday, February 20, March 27, 2015, to cast your ballot from that hour until at least 7 p.m. in the evening for the following offices. The Article 1 is the uh, election of offices that will take place in the afternoon. You are also notified to meet at the same place at 7 p.m. in the evening on the same day to act upon the following subjects. Article 2, and I, again, I will not read it all, just uh, briefly. To see if the district will vote to raise and incorporate the sum of $1 million for the purpose of funding all costs associated with the purchase, acquisition, and development of four pieces of property. Uh, these are the four pieces of property along uh, Ashworth Ave that the Hampton Beach Village District is proposing to purchase for the expansion of our parking, uh, parking lots. Article 3, to see if the district will pursuing to RSA 2652 uh, to add to the list of authorized purposes the purpose of maintenance of activities for recreational purposes and further to ratify all past actions of the district to maintain the activities for recreational purposes. Article 4, to see if the district will vote to accept the budget as submitted to the Budget Committee and to raise the appropriated sum of $563,377 for the district purpose in addition to any amounts that may be approved for special articles. Article 5, shall the Hampton Beach Village District accept the provisions of RSA 31-95-B, providing that any Villa district at an annual meeting may adopt any article authorizing and indefinitely and specifically the section of such authority, the commission to apply for, extend further action for the, this village district meeting, unanticipated money from the state. Article 6, on petition of Rudolph Pino of the 25 legal voters, shall the Hampton Beach Village District vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $2,000 in order to purchase and install the illuminated flagpole for flying the American flag at the precinct parking lot at the corner of Brown Ave and Ashworth Avenue. Article 7, on the petition of uh, Ida Pino, Uda Pino and 25 other legal voters at the Hampton Beach Village District for the Hampton Beach Village District vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $5,000 as a one-time donation to the Hampton Moving Wall Committee to defray the cost of bringing the Vietnam Memorial Wall to Hampton Beach. Article 8, to transact any other business that may legally come before this meeting. 
Again, that's just briefly the warrant articles. They will be read more thoroughly at the meeting, and the uh, meeting will be open to discussion on every one of those articles. In order to vote any particip any, and participate in the meeting, you must be a resident of the Hampton Beach Villa District on the voter registration list and present a valid picture ID. For new residents, if you are in doubt as to your voting status, the supervisors of the checklist will be here on Saturday, March 14th, between 12 and 1, as well as the fire station from 1 p.m. to the closing of the polls at 7 p.m. New sign-ups require a valid picture ID as well as proof of residency within the Hampton Beach Village District. There's been a, sometimes people have a misconception that they are, if they are registered to vote in the town, that it gives them the authority or the uh, the right to vote here in the village district. We have a, a more or less a separate government entity here, and the uh, you have to register here as a resident of the precinct or the village district to vote within the village district. The current voter registration list has been posted at BZ's convenience store at the, at the uh, the other end of the beach, here at the fire station, and at the lighthouse. So again, if you feel that you may have, if you haven't voted within the past couple of years, or if you are in doubt if you are on the list, uh, take a look at the list. If you're not there, just make sure that you contact the uh, supervisors of the checklist at the two, uh, the two times that uh, I mentioned. You know, it, uh, we've got quite a few articles here this year, and some a couple of big money articles. And so I just maybe personally urge everyone within the village district to attend our meeting. Uh, and people say, well, their vote doesn't count. But if you look at some of the results of the town election, there were a few uh, warrant articles that just really squeaked by by a few few votes. So your vote does count. So please uh, make a special effort to be here uh, on, Feb on March 27th at 7 p.m. to vote on these warrant articles. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Can I say it? Yeah. Um, I'd also like to remind people that the warrants are voted after they come in to vote in the box. So you need to remain at the meeting at 7 o'clock to discuss and vote on the motion, on the articles. Super. All right. For new business, I want to approve as written the warrant. Yeah. Can I get a, we have to move each one of these? Yeah. All right, and so we'll start with Article 1. Can I get a, uh, a motion on that? <coughs> move Article 1 as written in the warrant. Do I have a second? second? Okay, all in favor? Article 2. I move Article 2 as written in the warrant. Do I have a second? All second. All in favor? Article 3. I move Article 3 as written in the warrant. Do you have a second? I will second. <laughs> All in favor. Move Article uh, 4 as written in the warrant. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Article 5. I move Article 5 as written in the warrant. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? And I move Article 6. Yeah. <laughs> article 6. I move Article 6 as written in the warrant. Second. All in favor? Article 7. I move Article 7 as written in the warrant. I will second. All in favor. Now, how about do we have to do 8 since it's a transaction? Move Article 8. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? Article 8. Yeah, I move Article 8 as written in the warrant. Any second? second? All in favor? All right. That's it. All right. Any other new business? Maureen? Uh, I don't think so. We've had so many meetings lately. I think we've covered everything. No. I don't mind. No. No. Neither do I. All right. So we have public comment. Anybody have public comment? All right. <coughs> Brian Hoffman, 27 High Street. I just have a couple of quick things. I think it would be helpful if you put what the votes were on these articles. Um, it's nice to say they passed, but it just adds a little something 
Well, uh, maybe it just barely has, as we saw with our own the other day. Yeah. Oh, no, I, but just, just a suggestion. I can ask the lawyer why she did it that way. I don't know if we can do that now that we've already. <laughs> yeah, well, it well, may not work. Okay, let's just right. suggest it for the future. Okay. Okay. Um, Thank you. 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 Thank and the last thing I'm going to put an end to is on Mr. Lab, you have more integrity and morals than I will ever have. And thank you. <laughs> Another fan, Bob. You have a lot of fans. Wow. You yeah. have two fans now. I'm good in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but two is a lot to him. Uh, Ms. Silva was had her head up. Yes, she definitely was impressed. You mind? You were the first one. <laughs> I guess I'll have to ask why. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Ms. Chairman, Brian did make a good point about what the vote total is in. And you are able to amend your motion. Could you speak up? Because... You wish me to speak up? I know, I, I really regret that, but go ahead. I do too, because I'm very, very much a shy and quiet person, so I don't like to uh, speak up any more than necessary. Can I ask a question while you're over there? Does that, would that piece there easily come off the, behind there that's detracting everyone from standing at the mic? I don't know. I'm not uh, a carpenter. I'll look at it. Thank you. There you go. Do we need a motion? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just I'm looking at it saying it's really too bad people have to stand Well, I believe it was decided two or three years ago to have that removed, but whatever. Maybe there's a problem. I don't know. No matter. Yeah. As I was saying, Brian's suggestion about putting the vote totals in, I think, is valid. It's more forthcoming. Uh, and you do have the ability to amend your motion. There was no motion to restrict further consideration, was there? Mr. Chairman, there are a couple of uh, flaws, actually a few flaws, in your warrant. Uh, some of which I'm, perhaps all of which you're not aware of, so I thought I'd just uh, get it on the record. Okay. Article 5. The wording on Article 5, which basically says you can take money without getting voter approval forevermore. That was passed in March 25th of 2011 with the exact same wording. Proposed, I might add, by the exact same attorney that's proposing this for reasons I don't understand. Maybe you're going to put that at risk. I don't know. Okay. But it is redundant and totally unnecessary unless you're seeking some sort of validation. It said uh, the, the one in uh, the past one was uh, accepting gifts. This no, no. Is no, no. State I, I just went over the video on it, which I have. Yeah. It's exactly the same wording. I listened to moderator Rainier recite the wording. Right it is, it's written here. And what year was that? March 25, 2011. Also, in reviewing uh, Article 3, which attempts to adopt a singular provision of uh, 52 colon 6, is flawed in content as Article 52 is written and don't think it can stand legal muster. Article 2, which is your bond article, actually is contingent on Con Article 3, which puts that at risk on that point, as well as a few others. <coughs> I noticed that you've got here that the Budget Committee approved this article, and I think we all, those of us who have paid attention to the Planning Board knows that when they have a public hearing and they change any, any wording that's substantial to the, to the uh, article, that they have to do a new public hearing. And that's just the nature of the beast. When you change substantially uh, the topic of that public hearing after the public hearing, or even during it, you have to have another public hearing with another notice. The budget committees, uh, and by the way, the public hearing this refers to, I assume, was the alleged public hearing we had at the budget committee. Is that the public hearing you're referring to? So the Budget Committee held the public hearing. That's what this is referring to in this article, okay? Because when we, uh, at the Budget Committee, we have a different warrant article. 
in the one article that you brought to the budget committee, it says that the selectmen to apply for, obtain, and accept federal, state, or other aid. <clears throat> and this one here you've got says no longer the selectmen, but rather the commissioners. Uh, I would note that is a substantial change and requires a new public hearing. Additionally, the public hearing allegedly that was conducted by the budget committee, which I don't know in the law, if you look at the law on uh, 33 colon 8 dash A, which this bond article references, it doesn't say who will hold the public hearing. And I didn't go into looking for what the definition of a public hearing is, but I find it kind of curious that the same body that's proposing it ought to be the body that's holding the public hearing, not some other body. Uh, I think we did hold the public hearing on February 11th. Is that right? Yeah, we did. That was the meeting of the Budget Committee? No, 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 no February, February 11th. March. Oh, so it wasn't the public hearing of the no, Budget I'm, Committee? No, I, I'm reading it now. It says February 11th. No. It's right here, February 11th. It was at our yeah. precinct date. Second paragraph. I don't recall. What was the day of the budget committee meeting? March 7th. I was not aware of that uh, public hearing. It was posted. So, uh, there you have it. You have a substantial change in Article 2, uh, which, in my opinion, I think any uh, legal opinion that had the same morals as Brian or Bruce. <laughs> <coughs> Mr. D uh, would uh, agree that, that uh, changing it from selecting the commissioner is a substantial change, thus requiring a, a new public hearing. Yeah, I'll bring it up to the lawyer in the box. Mm -hmm. And again, I'll suggest that you might want to just remove Article 5 unless you're intending on putting it at risk. It's already in play. It's already right. in force. It's been there for four years. So, okay. Maybe Thank the wording's you. a little different. I'm not no, sure. No, no, I will check that. I will check with the uh, 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 Tom, uh, with our bill assistant attorney. Kathy, uh, hold on. Hi, I'm uh, Kathy Silver from the Blue Ocean Society. Um, I have a question about Article 3. Is this just a procedural? Just to like make sure that it's okay that the precinct um, authorizes for the purpose of maintenance of activities for the area. It's just procedure. It's okay, so been going on for it just makes 60 it all years, uh, 70 yeah. years okay. or whatever. Okay. 60 years, I think, 70 years. So right. 70 75. Years. 70 75, thank yeah. you very much. Right. So. Um, I, first of all, I'd like to um, really commend the district on this wonderful coloring book. I think this is very nice, and I very much appreciate that the Blue Ocean Society is on page 15. It says, visit the Blue Ocean Society's Marine Life Touch Tank. Okay, so that, we really would appreciate, we definitely appreciate that. Um, we'll be opening relatively soon. Um, we tend to open around Easter. I know last year we did, we, we had over 400 children visit us on Easter, um, the same day that they do the egg hunt at the beach. And I'm pretty sure we're planning to do that again. We definitely have a big, big event going for Earth Day. So there'll be more about that in the future. And that's in April. And then in the sp as the spring continues, we'll be open on weekends. And then, of course, once we get to school, finally getting out. <laughs> um, I think we all need to be aware that our season this summer is going to be shortened because of school getting out later. Yeah, we, um, that last week of um, June, many of the Massachusetts schools will still be in session. Mm -hmm. And we all know how much that affects us. But by then, we'll definitely be open every day. Um, I guess what I really want to talk about right now is a plea for volunteers. If you live at the beach, okay, parking is not a problem for you, of course. You can easily walk to our location, and we very much need volunteers. A okay, um, couple of hours, you know, maybe a day or two or three a week, but we need people to help us. Um, our payroll <coughs> is very, very high and we need to cut back on that. 
we had 15,000 visitors last summer. There is hardly a time when there isn't five or six individuals visiting us, and they come in at different times. So it's like every person needs to be welcomed and then shown around, and they need to have questions answered. So it's not like there's a show at a certain time. And because of this, we really need to have people help us with all of our visitors. We're at the case right now at we're almost too successful. Um, we need, we definitely need help. So if this is something you're interested in, um, retired people, um, school age children, like 12 or over, you know, we'll take, I think we would take volunteers. I think they um, accept them at age 12. We'll train you. It's not very difficult. If you don't want to touch, I have friends who don't want to touch animals. Um, if you don't want to touch animals, we'll put you on the craft end of the room, and you can do crafts with children. But really, we definitely need help. <laughs> and certainly, the week with the the sand castles, we're generally quite busy that week. But if this is something you know, you just you know, maybe you're retired and you just want to you know get out there and get into the crowds, okay, we would love to have you. So. Thank you. I know, that, um, okay. I know that some of the students at the eighth graders at Sacred Heart School have to do so many hours community Really? So and then also okay. uh, St. Thomas does that. And I know they were up there building, my son was one of them, they were up there building um, picnic tables and stuff up in Portsmouth. Right. I think so. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure you could get the word out to them. Okay, I've um, contacted the National Honor Society and the Interact Club, which, as many of you know, is part of Rotary at Winnicunit because these kids need to do volunteers. I've talked to all my students, and um, I, I think, you know, we'll have some. But as you all know, when the summer starts and they all say, oh, yes, we'll do it, <laughs> by the time we're to the first week of August, I'm still, I'm probably looking for more volunteers again. But um, as I say, I'm particularly interested in, as I say, retired people. You know, a couple of hours, you know, come out and, you know, talk to the people. Um, we have a maritime artifact <laughs> section with po above it there are postcards of Old Hampton Beach and the number of people that come in and say oh I remember that fire or I remember that and if we could have somebody who also remembers that would be very helpful there's not much a 14 year old kid can relate to with the person with that but if you remember it or you've lived here a very long time we could really use you. Okay. The uh, senior citizens that are there bench warming that are every day the same game. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure that they, they, they're someone you should probably grab them because they're there every single day no. in, their, in their spot. Yeah. And as I say, I'm especially interested in people who live at the beach because, as we all know, parking is quite a problem. It's very hard for me to get people to volunteer and then expect them to pay to park. Right. It's tough. I mean, it, because I don't have any parking places. All of my workers all pay. I ride my bike. So, yeah, it's hard. Yeah. Thank you. Handicap to take oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yep. Absolutely. Thank you. Mr. Pierce? Yeah, Mike Pierce. I live uptown not a president of the village district, but I'm a little concerned about this um, changing of the public hearing, the wording that to me is a violation of the rules. I think you're going to have a big problem with the bond council with that, and you should have anyway, and uh, because that's definitely stepping over that little line in the sand. Plus, now it will be evident that the budget committee didn't approve the article you're presenting, so you have a problem with that. The only thing I can say to you about both of those issues is you may have plenty of time to redo both of them if you have to. Because the budget committee didn't approve the article as it stands. Okay, so you have a problem with that. Which article you reverse it? The one with the, uh, <clears throat> that has the commissioners changed from selectmen. But anytime you change, substantially change an article, you have a problem. And I'm not telling you how to do it because I'm not an attorney, but uh, Mr. Lagg can probably tell you anytime you change a document, it's a legal document, you have a big concern. And I know that um, the budget committee wouldn't be too pleased with that either. Because now they'll have to say that they don't recommend it. Because they didn't vote on it. 
You see what I'm saying? The bond article. I mean, I'm, just, I'm a little concerned about that. And you might have enough time to get this all taken care of because the budget committee meets next Tuesday, and I don't know how much time we have. We can, I think we have to have five days' notice for a public hearing. So that's going to be a tight fit to get Tuesday. Yeah, <laughs> but there's always a possibility. You don't have about yeah, absolutely yeah. not. All right. It says the left of the end of the bond. Well, it's a normal. It's a normal post the last month. It's just like three times. Yeah. You know, I'm not an attorney, so I can't tell you if it'll fly or not. <coughs> Stephen, that's the same one you, that was posted uh, for the public year, right? This is the one that the public notice did last month. Yeah. And I posted it at four seconds. Uh, it's the same one. So, you know, here at the fire station, also at the Royal Market and the Lighthouse. And they're all signed and notarized. Okay. Right, I mean, my problem, my, the only problem that I think you might have is that they may not, I don't know, be quite the public. It's not. I would check with your attorney if Mr. Ladd does have a, a feeling on that because uh, I know that the planning board, like Tim referenced, is uh, very fussy about that stuff. From the public hearing, uh, the chair said what there's a lot of things for a different warrant. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know this problem, not probably but I think it's, it's something the budget committee doesn't have to talk about because it's not a minor. I'll just I'm not aware again. No, number two is like the two ones. That's the million dollar. Yeah, that's well, it was that I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah, if you look at the last okay. sentence, I don't know I don't remember having select one other. I don't know <coughs> why they would be on there in the first place. Yeah, just a, I don't either. This right. is a this is a but I thought when I recognize the select one I mean I said well obviously there's someone who you think post the best. Yeah. It's, it's not just the budget. budget. I understand. I'm just wondering how it got on there. That you know. I took I sent I just took the I took the work the that she gave us. Yeah. Oh, I know. I know. I don't understand how it could say select button. Yeah, I just can't um, I know. I'm not saying you did. Yeah, child. If, if for some reason you did get caught up in trouble, you know, you did the first thing would be reasonable. Basically, for a year. You can tell how to do that. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll see. I'll talk to Sharon. Because, yeah. So, Brian yeah. Lapham, 27 High Street. And this is all correct. Um, this is the selectman. And the vote was seven to four. At the budget committee. Yeah. At the budget committee. And because the wording has changed, this isn't what I signed. Well, maybe we just don't put that. It was, we'll see what the lawyer says. Yeah. I don't know what to do about that. Yeah. 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 I'll tell you, I just I just like to say on a good note, I don't know whose baby this was, Mari. Uh, actually, actually both of us. Okay. Well wh whoever was involved in this 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 is this is great. Yeah. I've heard about it coming to this meeting. I come to most of the meetings. I've heard about this for a year. It's come to fruition. The I just scanned it briefly since I got here. The storyline, the timeline. And the information is fantastic. Thank you. Sir. I know you were adamant about a real color book. Yeah. This is a real one. Yeah. I see you got 13 sponsors. You probably left off one money. If you want to be a sponsor in the future, please call us. We'll add that next year. Yeah. You know, there's 13 sponsors here the Boardwalk, the Casino Fast Food, the Cascade Cafe, McGurk's, the Sea Test, the 401 Cabin, the Ocean Walk, the Purple Merchant, the Harris Sea Ranch Motel, Kenfield Property Ships in, Bucks Lagoon, Lynx Fry Dough, and Alcorn Fishing. I'm sure they're going to be very happy to be here. I haven't gotten any money from these people. <laughs> <laughs> we don't give the money to you. <laughs> this, this <laughs> I didn't think we gave the money. Yeah, you're the one be the treasurer. <laughs> what do you think you are? Going well, it, it, sounded like a it sounded like a singular you. And it was. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, that's perfectly all right. Um, I bet you next year there'll be a lot more business working associated with it because I'm happy. It's this aggressive. 
Stephen, Stephen, one of the things that those people do, they have to do the children's festival, they do the boats and the things, so they don't necessarily come to you and the F&B clients and they give us a gift to the services. I have a gift to the public. That's right. Okay, so. Can I make a public comment? Is there a Let me, yeah, but let me just explain who this, where the sponsors are from. These are sponsors that have helped us with uh, idol competition, um, Children's, Children's Week, Week. They donate gift certificates to them, so that's that's where it's from. So there's no cash involved. Oh, okay. Then that, I want to. Don't. Well, oh, so they didn't sponsor the coloring book. No, they're, they're okay. beach sponsors. Right. They didn't sponsor event sponsors. No. Okay. So this is just a product of the team. Sure. Got it. That's what you think? That's what we're doing. Yeah. Well, so much, so much talk about procedure. <laughs> Only from you. No, no. From Ocean, Ocean uh, Water, or whatever the name is. Ocean Society. Blue Ocean oh, Society. Blue Ocean. Yeah. That's the name of the place, the restaurant. Blue Ocean. <laughs> <laughs> it's Ocean something. It's the same Nothing important. Who has a question? <laughs> All right, go ahead. <laughs> He just is nice. Okay. Recently, when I was at the uh, town post office, I ran into an old friend, and he sent me an email afterwards. And just for the record, I want to mention this. Uh, bumping, you at, bumping into you at the post office made me think I should share with you an idea for bo boosting the beaches and the town's economy. As you may know, I have written an eight-book adventure series, and then in parentheses, the Castleton series, that takes place in Hampton and involves characters that live in Hampton. The places in the book all exist either in town or on the beach. I also noticed that two other authors are writing crime novels that take place on Hampton Beach. My suggestion is to make Hampton into a destination for literary tourism. I'm attaching some information I put together on the subject of literary tourism. It has been a major boost for lots of localities. If the idea interests you and you would like to explore it further, I would be happy to sit down with you and other people from the Village District. And this is from uh, Mike Dunbar, who lives here in, in, um, in Hampton. And as John Kane, John, you know there's who is the author Jen here? At the Jen Powers, yeah. that's right. And I, I have to say that I've read I've read several of uh, the books and they're fantastic. So. These are the books of fiction. Yes. Fiction. Yes. So I just wanted to mention that for the record. Yeah. <laughs> no, none of the real characters are in the book. <laughs> no, of course not. So that one's coming out. So, <laughs> so if. If, if if you were interested in that, I could ask Mr. <laughs> Mr. Dunbar to come to the next meeting, and he could explain it to you further. If it's something that might you know interest you, I'm not sure I understand what exactly it would entail. I'm thinking of the. Um, I don't that, that know book about uh, the South Garden of Good and Evil. That one they made that a destination down in. Uh, uh, well, you know when he said when he said a literary uh, destination. What struck me was uh, there's a there are book fairs throughout the country at various times of the year, and it might be excellent to have a book fair here at the beach, especially <coughs> just before the season or just after the season. They draw a lot of people. Yeah. And to have a book fair, you might even be able to get some TV covers like through C-SPAN every weekend. They cover that stuff all weekend long. Yeah. Well, we also have Nancy Donovan. Uh, she the seagull that yes. wonderful yeah. seagull book that's and terrific. Out with the new book, and it's on dolphins. And the other person that's writing the book is Beth Holly's one. Well, she. maybe uh, maybe yeah, there's some so opportunity. There's a lot of so there's more than a couple talent. of people then who've got like There's a lot of writers, you know. Yeah. Well, you get a lot of authors, both right, local, but you could you could uh, highlight the local authors, but still, I, mean, I, I don't know, they, they go all over the place to, you know, to promote their books. So there's others on the sea coast, you can go see the Yeah, and, and, and it really does draw crowds. I mean, it's amazing. There you go. Just an idea. It's a little bit more than we normally draw. Yeah. Okay, good. I'll be coming to you. Yeah. Okay. Seriously. That sounds good. Just let me know. I'll talk to Mike. Maybe we could have them all come. I don't know. All the people we've been searching. Olivia. Yeah, that Channel 22 can't do business related. 
things. No advertising. No advertising. So yeah. maybe it's something that our marketing director could look into, and then we'll go from there, and then we can discuss it later. No, C SPAN will cover it. They won't charge for it. Seriously. And if you get C-SPAN coverage, the local media will cover the fact that you're getting coverage nationwide. <laughs> but that's nationwide coverage. Nice. Okay. All right. Excellent. Where were we? Any other public comment? <laughs> Okay, this is Klein, my Richard Rennie at 29 Highland Ave. Is different? Well, I identify myself as the moderator, but now I'm just a resident of the Hampton Beach oh, okay. District. Okay? Just like the rest of And I, uh, I'm kind of asking the indulgence of the commissioners for a few minutes. Uh, I'm looking at, the point being, I'm sure that at our meeting, there's going to be a lot of discussion on some of these warrant articles. Uh, at our meeting, I don't have the luxury of being able to get some information because I'm going to be the moderator. So I would like to just for as with permission from the commissioners if you could help me out with answering a couple questions here. I'm looking at Article 3 to see if the district is pursuant to RSA 52.6 vote to add to its list of authorized purposes the purpose of maintenance of activities for recreational purposes. Well, I guess before we get into that, I did just kind of a little history here, just to look back at a couple things. And I found in reading in the RSAs under 52.1 deals with the establishment of a, of a village district. And at the bottom of that, it says that the legal voters and inhabitants of any village shall cause a record of the petition pursuant to paragraph 1 and the proceedings therein to be recorded to the records of the town in which the district is situated. So I came up, I found a document that is dated June 26, 1907, Article 1, unanimously voted to establish a village district in the town of Hampton for the extinguishment of fires, sprinkling of streets, the supply of water for domestic and fire purposes, and the maintenance of common sewers to be called the Hampton Beach Village District. And at the bottom of that document, again, this is dated 1907, it says, the above report handed to Horace H. Lane, clerk of the town of Hampton, July 2nd, 1907, which to my way of thinking is that we have firmly established the authority that we have a authorized Hampton Beach Village District with the authorized activities of that village district listed in 52 Point one. It says to under 52.6 added powers, which is quoted in the Ward article that you have here. It says a district established for any of the purposes mentioned in RSA 52.1 may from time to time by vote and thereto any other of said purposes from any of after such vote shall have all the powers and rights and relations for new purposes. In other words, that's saying that the village district has by vote the authority to add to 52.1 the authorized functions of the district. Well, in Article 3, it says the maintenance of activities for recreational purposes which is what this article is saying that you're asking the voters of the Hampton Beach Village District to add that particular function. Is that correct? Is that the way my understanding? And yet, here I am looking at 52.1, which is on the books. Now, who knows how long it's been on the books. It's probably hard to tell. But in that listing, item H, the maintenance of activities for recreational promotion. 
So I guess maybe my where I have the quandary, if that is already in RSA 52.1 under the initial establishment of a village district, and I show the documentation that yes, the village district has been legally established <coughs> and the records followed on. I guess my question is why the necessity of this article to add something that's already there? I guess that's my question. May I ask that of the commissioners? Yeah. What, what, um, over the years you, you, um, you add different. There's, there's so many items that the village district can do. Right, there they are. There's a whole list. But you have to get approval of each item. Is that correct, Mr. Lab? Now, yeah. well, in 1930 something? 39. 39. Because of the Hampton Beach Village District, from what I've heard, that they had uh, put in the activities of, of entertainment and activity. Mm -hmm. uh, but unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be any record of that. So because there isn't a lot of records. Oh, well, sure. Yeah, from back when. So for 75 years, we have been doing that. So this is just a housekeeping measure. But even if, you know, let, let's say, yeah, because maybe the records got lost. Maybe they got lost in a fire at the town hall. Who knows? But what I'm saying is right now, or a flood? right today, 52.1 lists that. So we, I, th I, I don't want to use the word assume, but apparently someplace in the past, that was added to that list, and there it is. The maintenance of activities for recreational promotion. So, it's there. Why is it we are taking a vote to add something that's already there? Uh, Richard, I think what you're quoting is Chapter 57, which predated Chapter 52, which is the enabling legislation in 1907, when the district was formed. Going forward from that period of time, in the late 1930s, mm -hmm. at the sponsorship and endorsement <coughs> of the district, what you're referring to in Chapter 52 as promotional and recreational mm -hmm. authorization right. was added to Chapter 57. Right. The village district then, uh, reported in the papers, voted and accepted that. And because of that acceptance, spent three thousand dollars to buy promotional material for the New York World's Fair in 1939. Mm -hmm. Now somewhere around 1957 or in that time frame, chapter 57 was repealed and then replaced by chapter 52. So we've been actually been operating on chapter 30, 57 from 1907 to the 50s, mm -hmm. and now chapter 52 from the 50s to the present. But in each instance, the chapters authorize the same activities. So this is really a housekeeping item. It's a little bit like saying, my great-great-grandfather lost his birth certificate, and someone wants to say, therefore, you weren't born. You know, it's, that, it's just housekeeping. It's not I got it. It's just that, you know, from my way of thinking, this is the law of the land. <coughs> Whether it's 52 1, 57, or whatever, no. it is the law of the land. It's on the books now, and I guess we can't correct what may have been an error in the past. But, all right, uh, again, I just wanted my clar the clarification on that. Uh, because I know I'm, I'm just going to have the opportunity two weeks from now to ask again. Mm -hmm. All right? Thank all right, thank you. Uh, Anyone else like to speak? <laughs> that hasn't spoken? <laughs> You want to see an opportunity to save time in the annual meeting, and I appreciate that, Richard. I do. <laughs> Mr. Lett is correct, uh, and you're also correct in the 1907 adoption of the village district. Not a precinct, it was specified to be a village district. It's explicit in the document. I have the same one. I got it from the 91 request a number of years ago. I was asking these questions about where's the adoption for 52, and, and no one has been able to produce it. And no one seemed to care until the bond market would be caring about it, so suddenly we're going to do this. The history, not dependent on newspapers, but actually depending on law. If you actually look in 52, you can see when the various provisions were adopted and otherwise revised. You know, 52.1's original adoption was in like 41, 43, something like that. And the, the, the Clause in 51, 52 colon 1, referring to 
regarding the petition, that's only for those for creating a new village district. So during World War II, when 52 was created, we were not a new village district. We were already existing under 57. <coughs> So the operable clause for us is not 52 colon 1 with regard to adoption, it's actually 52 colon 22. And 52 colon 22 specifies that for already existing village districts, they may adopt the provisions, I highlight that that word is plural, they may adopt the provisions of 52, okay, by having a vote, simple vote that, that you know, we would have at an annual meeting. But it doesn't say that you can adopt a singular provision, but rather provisions. And when you do, you're giving up the laws under which you previously existed, namely 57 in our case. So in order to do this correctly, which we're not, in my opinion, we would have to adopt the provisions, as it says in 52 colon 22, the provision, have to adopt the provisions of 52, and specify which of the A through, what is it, A through H, or whatever it is, and adopt one or more of A through H uh, items there, but we would be adopting all of 52. A through N. A through N. So we would adopt one or more of A through N and all the other provisions of 52. Now, 52 differs from 57 in substantial ways. Uh, probably most noteworthy is the granting of the village district commissioners to uh, undergo the taking of land, which is not a provision available under 57. There are other such uh, noteworthy differences between uh, 57 and 52, which I won't go into. But that's essentially it. What you want to look for, Richard, in terms of how you go about adopting 52 is actually defined in 52.22, because that's for existing districts that had been created prior to the creation of 52, which was done during World War II. Okay. Thank you. All right. Is that it for public public comments? Anyone else? Okay. Couple of minutes. Page one. Page two. Page three. Page four, page five. I have a motion to approve the minutes from February 11, 2015. Move uh, to approve the minutes as printed. Do I have a second? A second. All in favor? Okay. Closing comments. Maureen? <coughs> no, I just hope everyone will come out to vote and stay for the meeting so that we can discuss these Warren articles at 7 p.m. on March 27th. Sounds good. I second Maureen's expression of support for the voters coming. I'll, I'll start with that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so on that note, we are going to adjourn the meeting at 617. Thank you.